Hello viewers, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whenever it is, you get to see this video. This is Physio Next Door Podcast. My name is Jennifer Chuku and I am your host. Today is a wonderful day because I have a special guest before me and we have an interesting topic we are going to be talking about. So today we are talking about neck pain. We are going to be talking about neck pain. If this is your first time of coming across this podcast, I want you to do me a favor. Just take out a minute to subscribe, like, and click on the notification bell so that you know whenever we drop a video. More so, you may know anyone who needs this podcast. Maybe your friend, your family, or your colleague. Do well to share this, this podcast with them. So let me tell you more about... Physio Next Door Podcast. So Physio Next Door Podcast is a podcast where we'll be sharing inspiring and educational content with you for your physical health and wellness. So if you have questions, if you have confusions, or whatever it is you have concerning that pain you're having, say neck pain, back pain, knee pain, whatever, do well to come down to our podcast and get solutions to your questions and your problems. Over to what we have for you today. So before me is our special guest. I want to say a big thank you to him because, I mean, this will be the second time he'll be gracing this show with us. So thank you for coming. Thank you for our having me. Our guest is Dr. Namdi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank yes. you ha for having me, Jennifer. You're welcome, you know, sir. Uh, each time you reach out to me concerning mm -hmm. uh, presentation mm -hmm. for what you're doing, I always feel very happy and I always feel very privileged to be doing that because I see this as a very serious issue and I see that information, mm -hmm. it's just the key to a lot of problems that we have. And for you to have come up with something this important so that more people can get to know more about their physical and their mental health. And it's something that really makes me so happy. So I will always be on ground to make sure that I do my best to educate our viewers and make sure that people have the right knowledge when it comes to the solution to their health related problems. Thank you so much, sir. It's nice to have you again. So uh, we have previous um, episodes that we have done. Our first episode was just to let you know what this podcast is all about, of which I've given you a summary, right? And our second episode, we had quite an extensive talk on some issues pertaining to back pain. You may want to check it out, really. You would really be inspired and you'll get answers to some of the questions you've been having. And just as I said, don't forget to share it with your friends and family members. So let's just dive right into what we have today so let me give you a brief information about our guest our guest just as i said is dr namdi eze he is the clinical director of um, at amazing Physi physiotherapy and wellness center which is currently the best physiotherapy service provider in nigeria so you can see that we have <laughs> a big person in our midst and he's well experienced and today we are going to be gaining from his wealth of knowledge you're welcome once again sir thank you jennifer all right so i have a number of questions to ask you um on neck pain okay, but then beautiful. i i would want to ask you because i saw a video on instagram and it was as if the person that created that video just said created something that was on my mind so i uh, you know it may look like as a physiotherapist you don't experience some of the things you treat people for yeah so that was the kind of thing the video was the caption was sometimes a physiotherapist also needs physiotherapy so this will lead me That's to true. my first question have you ever had neck pain in fact you know the the, the first time i got the message the email about okay. this topic i said bam <laughs> this is actually a topic i would like to talk about okay. because it is something that i have been through mm -hmm. and it is something i will be willing and ready to share more informa information and light on mm -hmm. so that people will understand how enormous the challenge of having neck pain is 
also sharing a bit about my own experience about how i got about solving my neck related problem that i've struggled with for a long time you know thank goodness that i'm in, a, in an industry that gave me the opportunity to have like a direct hands-on interaction with uh, specialists mm -hmm. in areas of neck pain intervention and it was a good way to have that feeling of exactly what patients mm -hmm. usually do so mm -hmm. at some period mm -hmm. of my treatment and interaction with our doctors by the way they are some of the best doctors when it comes to handling neck related problems mm -hmm. i could feel what patient feel exactly. and i could mm -hmm. go through the process mm -hmm. and uh, what even got me interesting was there was no point mm -hmm. in our interaction with the doctors that they didn't unbundle all what was necessary for me to you know take handy in terms of my home exercises mm -hmm. in terms of everything i needed to do so it was just pure unadulterated interaction mm -hmm. and treatment that i got you know there's something i also found out you know my journey with solving my neck pain was doctors mm -hmm. are never doctors when it comes to handling their problem mm. so when you have an issue mm -hmm. you know sometimes patient comes seeking solution to our problem mm. when we have issues and we also want to seek solutions to the problem we have we just become like we never even went to school we become so like everything you tell us we want to believe mm -hmm. because we are going through pains mm -hmm. so i don't know the psychology behind that mm -hmm. but i could i would tell you that i became a patient it looked like i didn't even know what mm -hmm. neck pain was all about mm -hmm. and every information that was given to me by the neck pain specialist that was handling me was pure interesting and practicable that it was easy for me to use and today I've been able to get over my neck problem. Wow, wow, that's really nice. That's really nice. You know, um, one of the things that made me to pick this topic was because I don't know, maybe because of the season, the hot season we are in, I, you know, there's a way this heat will be disturbing you. You will not know how to put your body to sleep. Yes. It makes you really restless. So I think one of the days I used my pillow and I woke up with, you know, neck pain. So I was like, am I the only one, <clears throat> excuse me, am I the only one experiencing this thing? I don't know. The other people with the whole hotness and everything, are they also having this, this kind of restlessness that will make you want to take certain sleeping positions that will result in neck pain, you know? So I know that from what I've said, there might be other causes of neck pain, right? So yes. I would want you to tell us what are the common causes of neck pain? Yes, yeah, so... I will go straight to how my own problem started. Okay. Yes, I'm a fitness enthusiast. I love to work out a lot. And uh, one day I was just in the gym. Mm. You know, when you are in a gym, when you do your first rep, you are a bit more excited, wanting to add a few more pounds to what mm -hmm. it was. So I think I, I was doing a deadlift. And I usually have a routine whereby when I come to the gym, I do my stretches properly then i go to my first exercise which is a deadlift so unlike so many people who want to have a leg day back day you know shoulder day mm -hmm. i usually don't have any day <laughs> you know because if i have a leg day that means if i miss my shoulder day mm -hmm. then i don't have anything on my shoulder so i love to make sure that every part of my body was exercised mm -hmm. so but i don't know something happened i, I think i was late to the gym so I forgot to do my early on warm up and stretch. Mm -hmm. So I quickly hit on the shoulder pull. After doing the shoulder pull, I went to the deadlift. So I, I was about at uh, 100 pounds, my deadlift. I did my first 10 reps. Then I got excited, you know, you know, everybody is doing well in the gym. And it's something that you want to actually show a few more uh, energy and advancement you've got. So I added a few more pounds. I think then it was about 150 pounds. So I moved from 100 to 150 pounds. And I went up and I came down. I went up and I came down. And the next thing, I, it just felt like something was grabbing me on my upper trap. That's the upper part of my, my shoulders. Mm -hmm. So I dropped the weights. Everything was fine. 
I finished everything. I wasn't like in any agonizing pain mm. or any distress. So I went through other programs. I did my squat, I did my dumbbells, and everything was good. So going home, driving in my car, I discovered that someone was honing at my back, mm. was yelling at me mm. because I was in a traffic. So he wanted me to, he, he, I was blocking the path. Okay, he wanted to he pass. And I couldn't just turn to even see who this person was. I was like, okay, ah, this is interesting. Mm. 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 So the first thing that came to my mind was, hmm, this is going to be an interesting journey. <laughs> How am I going to navigate this? Mm. So the first thing I wanted to talk about, which is uh, your physical trauma. Mm. Are you getting me? Mm. Physical trauma resulting from a strain that you have experienced. Mm. So in my case, the typical cause of my neck pain was a physical strain. Mm -hmm. Not an exact traumatic experience, I also talk about that, mm -hmm. but I was supposed to do something and I had a strain. Mm -hmm. So in my little research and experience as a, a, a neck pain specialist, I am a physiotherapist who has seen lots of people with neck conditions. What I understood happened was, I actually lifted so much, and I didn't position my neck properly. Mm -hmm. So there was so much weight pulling on my shoulders. And it was a routine I was doing for the first time. So you can imagine that shock, for lack of a better word, and that strain that happened there. So mm -hmm. physical strain is number one reason why people will have neck pain. And the second reason, trauma. You see, a lot of time people will tell you when they come into the clinic, they will tell you that they were driving and somebody hit them at the back. Okay. And you could see when, if you are able to demonstrate what exactly might have happened, mm -hmm. you will discover that there is a forward and backward movement. Yeah. So we, re we always refer to that as a whiplash. Okay. I also have an experience with whiplash. There was one day I was going home from work, that several years ago, by the way, and my driver was... You know, he got stuck in a particular point and he wanted to use another point. So he was reversing, which he was not supposed to do because I yelled at him. I said, look, Mr. Man, this is not what you're supposed to do. You have to make sure that you do the right thing, follow this, the hold up with some clear. So he was like, he's in a hurry. He needed to. The next thing, he didn't look back. Someone just hit us from the back. The impact was not so much, but I experience firsthand what that whiplash could be mm -hmm. so if it was so much violent then we should be talking about something else so that's several years ago mm -hmm. i didn't have neck pain but a lot of people may not have gone free from that experience right and they will have the impact will have caused them a lot more pain than it did to me so i didn't have pain everybody just came out and everybody you know apologies here and there he agreed to fix the part of the car so that we will not involve the authorities and stuff like that. But that's another cause of neck pain. Now, another very important cause is posture. Mm -hmm. These days, we are in an age of civilization whereby everybody sits down. Everybody is always on their smartphone. Mm -hmm. These days, you hardly see people even look up anymore. Nobody looks up because everybody is always looking down. So I don't know. It seems like we are always, you are even getting shorter because every day, everybody, everybody is bent down. down. Everybody naturally. is looking at their phone. Everybody is looking at their computer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's effect of posture. And if mm -hmm. you will understand exactly what happens with your posture. So just imagine the human head. On average, a resting human head on the neck is about... 10 pounds mm -hmm. that's about 4.5 to 5 kg okay. then any inch flexion that's any movement forward mm -hmm. increases the size of the head so oh. if you move forward to look at your phone mm -hmm. that your head that was 12, 10 to 12 pounds can easily become 30 pounds wow. your muscles have not changed okay. your bones have not changed mm -hmm. but your head has doubled so now your head is two times or even three times heavier than your neck. So imagine all of a sudden, that same tiny neck is now supporting a massive ton of head of about 10 kg. Mm -hmm. the, the lower you go, the heavier it becomes. So if the first layer 
is acting on the muscles directly, the next layer will start pulling the ligaments. The other layer will start pulling the bone. So imagine that impact continuously for a long time. That's when the mechanical neck pain comes about. And that is the most common type of neck pain that you see in any doctor's office, our posture. So we have a civilization disease, which is sitting down mm -hmm. and you could get text neck. So you get to hear people talk about text neck all the time. That is what usually happens in that case. Mm -hmm. Now, aging. Yes, I'm getting old. Mm -hmm. Thank God that I'm getting old. Mm -hmm. Aging is a good thing. And uh, you may be susceptible to a lot of degenerative changes. That is just wear and tear of your bones, wear and tear of the joints. So it doesn't just happen in the neck. You hear a lot of people talk about arthritis. It's not only in the knee. It also happens in the neck. So those degenerative changes, thank God, for the opportunity to get old, to even experience that. So when people say they have arthritis, I say that's a sign of blessing because God has given you an opportunity to experience mm -hmm. aging. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you had passed on before you got old. Mm -hmm. So it's a blessing. Now that's also a cause of neck pain, especially when mm -hmm. those joints now become stiff and they are not moving enough. It begins to impact. So there is another very less common uh, reason why people have neck pain which is maybe cancer or you know growth or tumor those are just very rare cases where you can have neck pain mm -hmm. and uh, you have cancer it could easily show with your unexplained, unexplained weight loss it could easily show with your feverish feeling all the time it could easily show with your lack of sleep it could easily show with the intensity at which you feel the pain mm -hmm. so those ones are red flags Physiotherapists are not going to be hands-on in managing those cases. You have to refer appropriately to the oncologists who will evaluate you further and place you on uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy depending on what his recommendation will be afterwards. So that's also another interesting uh, cause of neck pain. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another very interesting one that I, re I recently found out mm -hmm. and which is also tied to the second point about posture mental stress these days people are always working and you get to see a lot of people tighten themselves when it's about meeting deadline everybody is busy mm -hmm. i have a couple of friends that you can't even speak to anymore these days because they are always busy mm -hmm. so sometimes they tell you they have headache now that headache may be coming from a tension that they have in the neck so those are the kind of tension headaches that come and you so much stress what happens because your muscle is so much agitated you are so much focused in a particular direction to do whatever it is that you are doing then you tend to experience that neck issue wow. so that one can easily be taken care of when you just distress mm -hmm. you know pace your work take care of yourself mm -hmm. don't think so much about the past don't think too much about the, the future. future. Focus on the now mm -hmm. because that is the one you have control over. True. So those are just so, a few interesting causes of neck pain True. that a lot of people come down with. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm learning, I'm learning a lot. I personally, I'm guilty of the whole putting my head down like this to yeah, press my phone. And with are. the knowledge that the more I do that, the more weight I place on my neck, I'm telling you, I'm going to stop doing that. <laughs> So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, I would want to take us back a bit. Okay. So is I want to know what exactly neck pain is. Is there more to what neck pain is than just my neck pain in me? Okay. So neck pain, and uh, a lot of people will say in the medical world you could hear cervicalgia, mm -hmm. and it's just pain in the spine. Okay. The the neck is what we call the cervical spine. Okay. So it starts below the cran the cranium which is the base of the skull okay. then it ends in the first thoracic vertebrae okay. so those region is what we refer to as the neck pain and sometimes it can move down your hands or it can remain so if it moves down in your hand okay. we call it the radicular pain and if it remains within that neck region it's just the axial pain okay. and uh, it's all about muscle 
bone, mm -hmm. disc, depending on. And uh, if your disc are hyenated, that means there is something impinging on the nerve. So it's all about signal, transfer of pain signal mm -hmm. as a result of an issue going on. Mm -hmm. So I enumerated a couple of things that could cause it. Those things are there. Those things are not just spiritual or supernatural. Mm -hmm. They have to impact on the connective tissues around that region. Mm -hmm. Then those connective tissues will now send signal through the nerve to the brain. Then that gets interpreted to us as pain. So that is what happens. For example, if you have a disc issue, mm -hmm. that means the disc will be pushing out and irritating the nerves around there. And the nerves will, first of all, feel bad, then send information to the brain, mm -hmm. telling the brain that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Then what the brain does, it goes back to the muzzle and it makes the muzzle to tighten as a withdrawal mechanism. You can liken it to when there is fire and someone says you should put your hand. Let's say you didn't know that there was fire before. Mm -hmm. You put your hand and it burns you and you know you withdraw it, reflex. Mm -hmm. Now you know there is fire. Then someone is now trying to tell you to put your hand. The next response is no. Exactly. Then the person tries to force your hand into the fire. You know you'll be withdrawing. Mm -hmm. So that is what the muscles will be doing. Okay. Because they now know that mm -hmm. there is an irritation there. So it is a millisecond decision that happens within the musculoskeletal system and the central nervous system. And that's what gives you that the pain. Thing. Wow so beautiful all right all right so um we've talked about some of the causes of neck pain and of course we'd want to know the solutions so that we would become pain free we all want to be productive we all want to go about our day-to-day -day activities without you know having pain without feeling discomfort so what are the what are some of the habits we can practice to avoid neck pain or cure neck pain if there is naturally without using any other thing yes so one interesting thing about my journey with neck pain has always been how much the doctors mm -hmm. the physiotherapists at amazing physiotherapy empowered me on how i will be my own personal doctor mm -hmm. and that was that involved apart from the beautiful things they were doing the hands-on the advice the education it was all about me knowing exactly what my problem was. And that is understanding the root cause of your problem. To me, I lifted. I know I had a sprain in the neck. But to them, they wanted me to understand that my muscle response and reaction is what is actually grabbing my neck. Mm -hmm. So education is the first thing for anybody who wants to go about solving their problem the right way. So I was educated. I know more about what my problem is and it gave me much more uh, needed boost to go about solving my problem. So this, the second thing I went through was understanding the difference between hot okay. and cold. Good. You know, a lot of people, when they injure, the first thing they rush to is rub or hot water. Mm. You know, they go get their hot water massage the place massage the place now my own experience because i had that there was inflammation mm -hmm. and inflammation means a response a natural response whereby the body is turned somewhere mm -hmm. there is a reaction there is an irritation mm -hmm. and it needed to go down inflammation itself is not a bad thing but when you introduce hot that means you are triggering the inflammation so much. It's also a response. So we want to introduce what we call something cold. Just to calm the place down. And calming the place down means that the blood vessels will not be pushing so much blood. Because with the in, uh, inflammation going on, there are some other toxic wastes that the body produces. And those are the things that irritate the nerve endings and causes you pain. So cold therapy was involved. And what would I thought? You could just get like a... They asked me if I had uh, access to uh, ice block. And I did. Mm -hmm. I got ice block. All frozen vegetables. Mm -hmm. Place it at my back. 
on the on my upper shoulder and i slept and it was really very relieving it was calming and it was also very soothing i really enjoyed that part of my treatment to be honest the part of my treatment i didn't like was the stretches because i was in a lot of pain mm. but i will come to that later so the cold was actually you know giving me the much needed relief now they needed to educate me on my sleeping position which is a very important mistake we all make mm -hmm. you know imagine throughout the day you are seated mm -hmm. you've caused so much trauma to your neck mm -hmm. your head has become bigger and heavier for your neck and your neck needs this much needed rest and you go home and you put it through much more trauma by your improper position of sleeping so one a sleeping position that was recommended to me was sleeping on the side and you sleeping on the side means you have to get a proper pillow uh, i was recommended to get a memory pillow to support my head and there was a trick to supporting my neck imagine a lot of people when they get this uh, pillow they just place it on their head and yet again their neck continues to get that pressure now there is a thin line between using a pillow to support your neck and also support your head placing it deeper towards your shoulder to support both your neck and to support your head is the trick and that was what i was using and i was sleeping on my side all right thank you so much for that wow wow so it's interesting to know that there are things we can actually do you know even on our own to avoid this neck pain from coming upon us and um, you mentioned something about sleeping positions, right? Yes, I think I saw a YouTube video on that. So perhaps that will be, um, that will be on the description box. Yes. And another thing, Physio Next Door podcast is hosted by Amazing Physiotherapy. So we are going to be putting, there's a, there's a blog that has been written about the right sleeping posture to, you know, avoid neck pain. So the link to that blog will also be on the description box for you to go back, read it, and see how well you can help yourself. So um, now, you mentioned that some of the things you were able to do were information that the physiotherapist gave you. So now I'm wondering, when is the right time to go see a physiotherapist? Because I know in Nigeria, I don't know if it's just Nigeria, <laughs> Well, some people have the practice of, you know, when they just observe some symptoms, they just want to do some things. You know, you talked about, we just want to use rub or we just want to use hot water. But that might not be the right solution to the person's problem. So when is the right time to go see a physiotherapist? Okay, so beautiful because apart from having the knowledge, being someone who is a medical provider and knows that I needed to be on my feet to be able to do my work so i did it a solution as quickly as possible you are correct when you said a lot of people may not want to go see a provider mm -hmm. but when you have neck pain right and you discover that a lot because it's also very important to state that sometimes the neck pain may not be serious and it may disappear okay. so if your neck pain persists after one week in my case i didn't have to stay for one week to okay. go seek solution so if it stays persists for more than one week it's important that you go see a physiotherapist mm. a neck pain specialist will always come in handy to solving your problem so the second reason is if you are experiencing radiating symptoms let's say the pain is now flowing down the back of your your hand or flowing on your shoulders mm. so what it then means is it's becoming radicular so before you know it it leaves the original point of injury mm -hmm. then begins to flow to other areas okay. exciting other tissues okay. that's another very important if it's as a result of trauma let's say you were hit your car was hit from the behind and you experience whiplash injury it is very important that you go see a physiotherapist, physiotherapist. if all of a sudden you discover that it's causing you headache okay. so that is another interesting point where we refer to as cervicogenic headache okay. another interesting point is if your neck pain because a lot of us will the first thing we'll do is we'll rush to the pharmacy mm -hmm. 
and get over-the-counter medication, which is not bad. You know, when I was explaining my experience about using cold, it was a means of anti-inflammatory, but this is natural. But a lot of people may not think about that. So they will go get over-the-counter medications, which are usually non-inflammatory, uh, 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 which are always anti-inflammatory medications, mm -hmm. ibuprofen, prastamols also come in handy. Mm -hmm. When your medication doesn't work, mm -hmm. even though, by the way, amazing physiotherapy does not want you to rely on mm -hmm. pain medication, when your over-the-counter medication is not working, right, you have to go see a physiotherapist. Then, rarely though, but it's also something that may happen. If you begin to experience loss of balance, you begin to experience bowel, more like urination is becoming challenging. You want to go to urinate before you get to the bedroom, it goes out. You want to use the toilet before you know. There's just an irregular habit when it comes to your urinary system and your bowel system, then that's a sign that you need to go seek intervention from a specialist. Mm -hmm. So all these things are really very important. And last but not the least, I've been re it has been reviewed by numerous journals and numerous uh, academias, smoking. If you, are, you have neck pain and you're smoking and you're a smoker, you need to go see a specialist as quickly as possible because smokers have the tendency to accelerate degenerative process in the spine. And again, when you have neck pain and you're a smoker, because there is less blood supply, because that smoke, ha smoking habit will impair blood supply to that area, mm. it's actually going to put you at risk of having recurrent neck pain. Not only neck pain, but anything that has to be with the spine. So for a lot of people, it may just be like a cardiopulmonary respiratory issue that has to come with smokers. No, but this time around, it's been reviewed that smokers will not only be liable to die young, but will also have serious neck pain and back pain. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing how the different, different um, parts of our body are somewhat connected to the other. So, I mean, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot. We've talked about a lot of things. Myself, the host, I've, I've learned a lot. And I want to believe that you have learned a lot from everything that has been shared by our physiotherapist and special guest. On this note, we've come to the end of the third episode of Physio Next Door podcast. Dr. Nam, did you have any last words for our audience? Yes. So, uh, what I want your, your audience are, are very amazing and uh, they've been able to keep to the end of this podcast, you know, getting detailed information. So, when next you have issues, any medical issue, the first thing you should do is seek proper understanding of what your problem is. That goes a long way. It's not about what everybody tells you, but make sure that you are also seeking information from a specialist. It could be your neck, it could be your back, it could be anywhere. But whatever medical condition you're seeking information for, make sure it's from the specialist. So you can actually understand the root cause of your problem. That goes a long way in solving your problem by half. Now, I want you to guys to keep active stay active try to exercise according to who the recommended exercise for uh every adult including kids should not be less than 150 minutes of light intensity exercise at least between four to five times in a week vigorous exercises between two to three times in a week introduce some level of strengthening programs even if you don't go out to work out in the gym it's important that you have some level of a strengthening program going on within your uh, system. And I want you to keep living pain-free, independent, and an active lifestyle. And also thank you for listening <laughs> to Physio Next Door. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Physio Next Door podcast. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.